Hello, folks. Our Timeter questions create angst for some student pilots. The description of the instrument itself is included in the Aircraft General Knowledge Learning Objectives, or LOs. The altimeter setting procedures are covered in the Air Law LOs. The type of question I'm thinking about today normally crops up in meteorology, and they are called altimetry calculations. You may have seen this type of question before. An aircraft is flying at flight level 50 over terrain which extends up to 1,750 feet AMSL. The local pressure setting is 9 and 9 and 8 hectopascals. That's the QNH. If the temperature structure is the same as in the ISA, what is the aircraft's height above the terrain? We assume for this question, and we're given this in the question, that 1 hectopascal equates to 30 feet. Well, the easiest way I found to approach these questions is to remember a couple of things. One is that altimeters actually measure pressure. They're a barometer. And if the altimeter reading remains constant in the aircraft's cockpit, the aircraft is actually flying along a pressure level. Those pressure levels decrease with the increase in, in, away, further away from the Earth. So the higher the pressure reading, the closer that pressure level is to the surface of the Earth, all other things being equal. For example, pressure level of 1008 hectopascals will be closer to the Earth, or lower, if you like, than a pressure reading of 9999 hectopascals. Assuming we are talking about the same location um, over the Earth and around approximately the same time, because, of course, the ambient pressure will change with location and time. This means that by drawing a simple diagram, we can solve this problem efficiently and accurately. If we look at the question I referred to a little earlier, we can solve this using the following steps. Firstly, we draw a horizontal line at the bottom of the page and annotate that line 1013 hectopascals. We then draw an aircraft symbol at the top of the page. We mark the vertical distance between the 1013 hectopascal pressure level and the aircraft as 5,000 feet, because flight level 50 is 5,000 feet pressure altitude, i.e. 5,000 feet above the 1013 hectopascal pressure level. Next thing we do is to draw a line above that 1013 hectopascal pressure level and annotate it 9098 hectopascals. This represents the mean sea level. On top of this diagram, draw some terrain and annotate the distance between the mean sea level and the highest point on the terrain as 1,750 feet. Now we have a clear picture of what's going on and we can do some calculations. The distance between the 1013 hectopascal level and the 998 hectopascal level, level is given by the calculation 1013 minus 998 equals 15 times that by 30, because it's 30 feet per hectopascal, gives us 450 feet. Now we know the distance between the 1013 hectopascal level and the top of the terrain. This is given by simply adding the 450 feet and the 1750 feet, 2200 feet. Now, if the aircraft is at flight level 50, 5,000 feet above the 1013 hectopascal level, and the top of the terrain is 2,200 feet above the 1013 hectopascal level, then the aircraft's height above the terrain is 5,000 feet minus 2,200 feet, 2,800 feet. The confusion typically starts when you forget that the higher the pressure level, the closer that level is to the to the Earth, to the Earth's surface. With practice, this paper diagram approach can be replaced by creating a mental image to save time in the exam. I'll leave you with this question. On a lovely summer's day, an aircraft is flying at flight level 30 over terrain, which is 1,550 feet AMSL. 
the local QNH is 1028 hectopascals. If the temperature structure is the same as the ISA, what is the aircraft's height above the terrain? Using one hectopascal equates to 27 feet. I'll give you the answer in the next short video. Cheerio for now.